Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Managerial Accounting, a discussion. Accounting is often divided into two types, financial accounting and managerial accounting. When we stop and think about what's the purpose of any accounting, I'd like to refer to the conceptual framework of IFRS. IFRS is the International Financial Reporting Standard. The key objective of financial reporting, and I use this in the broad sense of both financial and managerial, is to provide financial information that is useful, useful is the key, to current and, provide, and potential providers of resources in making decisions. This can be both internally and externally. And when we look at things from that perspective, everything flows from that central objective, useful information. Um, financial accounting is about recording of transactions. How do you record a transaction? These are events that have already occurred. Uh, so this is the processing of checks, the depositing of, of money, the purchase of a, a supplies and materials needed to go into the cost of goods, um, capital expenditures such as equipment, borrowings, so it's the process of recording the transactions on events that have occurred. The next step in financial accounting is organizing that data into financial statements. And the financial statements that are generally talked about are the balance sheet, what are the assets and liabilities and equity of the company, income statement, how did they do in the preceding period, statement of cash flows, where did cash come from? Where did it go? To control assets, okay? To make sure that there's proper control so that people don't take money. That could include inventory, cash, receivables, and other aspects. The fourth thing is these financial statements are prepared in accordance with what we call GAAP, or generally accepted accounting stat principles, GAAP, or international financial reporting standards. You will learn more about the difference between the two of them and what the two of them are as if you take additional accounting classes. Um, the question is, as I said, this is going to be useful information. So who are the users of financial statements and what do they want? And let's look at this from the financial accounting perspective. Uh, they are used by shareholders. These include uh, large, well, we refer to them as institutional, which are pension plans, um, investment funds, uh, trust accounts, 401ks that are managed by people like T. Rowe Price and Vanguard and Schwab and uh, all that. And then there's the individual investor, you and I, that provides information to us about the company. Um, analysts are using them, and analysts are uh, those that are paid by various folks to analyze companies. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, once you can take 311, uh, managerial finance, you can also take financial statement analysis, accounting, slash finance 315, uh, where you'll learn all about that. Um, for the news media, keeping the public informed, um, creditors, okay? Uh, these are people who lend the company money, whether that be traditional lending or whether that be in the financial markets as bonds. Uh, and the creditors need it to evaluate current, is the firm have, what's the firm's, is the firm complying with terms of the credit agreement and to determine whether they should lend more money. Uh, next is the government agencies, uh, the taxing authorities, whether that be the IRS, New York State Department of Taxation, or Compliance, the Department of Labor, um, OSHA, um, say, say, uh, 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 Office of Self, OSHA, OSHA, and the SEC, the Securities Exchange Commission. So those are the primary users, but there's other stakeholders that are Involved. So this is how the users of financial statements and how financial accounting, which you do, is used. Okay, We're going to keep this theme going as we move into managerial accounting. 
Um, accounting comes down to a couple basic things. And these are the, I'll call them the Boyd accounting rules. Follow these and you will eliminate most of the mistakes that you make in the field of accounting. Debits equal credits, okay? This is the double entry bookkeeping system, which has been in use for many, 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 many years, hundreds of years. So debits equal credits. So whenever you're looking at something, there's always two sides to the transaction. So if you want to understand what's happening, you need to look at both sides. It can be helpful to look at the account type, and that is, is it an asset? Is it a liability? Is it equity or capital? Income or revenue? Expense. So a debit will increase assets, decrease liabilities, decrease equity capital, decrease income, increase expense. A credit, on the other hand, reduces assets, increases liability, increases equity capital, increases revenue, decreases expense. So when we're looking at that, we always want to look at both sides of the transaction. This is so fundamental and you can make a lot of mistakes or get hung up in trying to understand something without looking at the other side. The next thing is the matching concept or matching principle. In this point, what we're trying to do is match revenue with expenses. So if we've earned revenue, we want to match the expenses associated with that. So we're looking at that matching. Okay, so revenues are recognized. What are the expenses around them? You can look at that conversely is expenses should be reported when the revenue is earned. So we have this matching. Don't forget these two accounting principles according to me, Boyd. Okay, you'll find them very helpful in everything you do. Um, oh, what is managerial accounting? Um, it provides useful information to management of the firm. We're fi external financial statements are very focused in a compliance with the a standard way of, of doing it for the external users to give them useful information. Managerial accounting is providing financial information to manage the firm to do a couple of things. Develop business strategies. Where is a company going to go? And if they're going in this direction, how will they know this is the right thing to do? What will be the financial impact for these business strategies? So we want to tie, the managerial accounting has to really focus on what the business is, how the business is running. It's very integrated with the day-to-day -day operations of the company, okay? It's not geared to outside users, but you got to develop strategies. A company needs to know where to go. They need financial information to do that. Um, developing plans, um, it's important. Now, I made a distinction between strategies and plans. Strategies are directional, aspirational. Where are we heading? Plans are how we are going to get there. The amount of inf the type of information and the amount of information we needed is different for what the purpose is. So in managerial accounting, we're more focused on what is the user's needs. Which part do they need? Um, it's to make decisions make decisions about should we stay in a business, should we exit a business, should we give people raises, should we offer these benefits. Um, operational decisions day to day, pricing decisions, how should we price our product. We need to price it to make money, so it's used in that decision making process. Um, evaluate performance. How well is a business doing? Oftentimes, businesses are organized by divisions, uh, they're organized by business line, by customer type, but how is the performance? Is the performance generating an appropriate return on the investment the firm has? It could also be used to evaluate performance of individuals. How are they doing relative to their goals? So we evaluate performance. 
Um, understanding how the business works. I think when we start in, we start looking at cost detail, you'll get a sense of what that means. How does the business work? What is the processes of how a company delivers a product or service to its customer? Once you can understand that, and you can see each activity that is done, and you can assign a cost to it, you could look at it to say, how could we now make this process more efficient? More efficient would translate into lower costs or higher revenues. It can also be used as a, a, a tool to control costs, to make sure we don't spend anything more than we need to, to be able to generate the income and the gross margin and the gross profit that are needed for the company. So what we're doing is this is a, a different way of looking at financial information based on what is needed by the leadership of the firm. Okay, It doesn't have to come out at a specific time. It can have estimates in it, um, among other things. But it's useful financial information, just as you, external financial reporting is the for the users that we previously discussed but so is managerial information but managerial information is very inwardly focused okay um, let's keep going but this is a bad thing, but it just it just keeps going historical data provides measurement measures of past operations we start with historical data um, so when we're starting with historical data and we want to use it to create reports or information to make these decisions, we got to start with historical data. Still helpful to understand what the debit or credit is. Oftentimes um, we use in managerial accounting estimated data, subjective estimates about future decisions, methodologies for the how we put reports together and what we do are set by the company. We don't follow necessarily a gap. We try to follow what is needed for the company. And in many cases, uh, management reports are prepared for products, for projects, sales tariffs, or other segments of the company we're going to take a, a look at the structure of the company so that you can see how these reports could be used. And this information is really used by the management of the firm as opposed to external users. Um, in many cases, GAP is not relevant to the specific decision-making needs of management. Okay, We still need GAP to be able to produce financial statements that accurately really portray the historical results of the firm. But some of the information that management needs, uh, there is no gap. It's about what is the need to make a decision here and now. Now, it, managerial accounting and managerial finance, they're similar. Managerial finance starts with the output of management accounting and guides its production. So I think you need to understand how information is used before you can produce it. So if you know what the longer term use of this information is, how it is used, I think you'll find it much easier to understand the how if you know the why. Uh, this is just a, a brief summary right here um, that compares and contrasts financial statements. Uh, so take a look at that. Um, there can be in managerial accounting production reports, uh, activity analysis, budget reports. And I think the key distinction is the user, uh, internal, external, um, objective. Financial statements are objective. Managed reports can be subjective too. One's prepared according to GAP, prepared according to management needs. Managerial accounting can, can be done on a scheduled basis if you do a month-end report um, or as an and needed basis when you need to do it. Um, when we look at external financial statements, um, the company as a whole, um, 
managerial accounting reports can be produced at all different levels. So that gives you a brief overview of what manager, managerial accounting is. Next, we're going to look at the purpose of the firm and the structure of the firm so that you can have a better idea of how managerial accounting fits in since it's about the company and how it's run, providing useful information. If you have any questions, please let me know.